Hey, what's up mortals? It's Ray here with a new video for you. In this video, we'll dive into a quirk tier list from the My Hero Academia anime. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, just sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. Let's get started. My Hero Academia has the large number of quirks as a result of almost 80% of the global population having changes to their biology. These have a variety of advantages and disadvantages to the user, but which one is the superior quirk? All men are created equally, but their abilities are not. There must be a few things said before we start. No support items will be used, as the support items cover for the weaknesses of the quirk, as well as adds utility to the quirk. For example, Shinso Hitoshi's quirk, Brainwashing, allows him to have limited control of the person that answers his question that was directed at them. One of his support items allows him to copy the voice of someone around him, causing communication to be more difficult, as well as covering for the weakness of his opponent knowing how his works. Another rule is that this is a tier list on how potent each quirk is, rather than ranking the characters themselves. Momo can make anything she wants within reason, making it more versatile than Bakugo's explosion or Denki's electrification, but no one would say that Momo is a stronger opponent than Bakugo. Lastly, some categories will judge the quirk's effectiveness in a variety of situations from combat, when relevant, to support, as well as uses in stealth missions or hostage rescue. Combat is broken down into five subcategories. Damage potential, defensive potential, crowd control, the effectiveness of the quirk and its attacks on a large group of average villains, large threat control, the effectiveness of the quirk and its attacks on a larger threat like a prime nomu and drawbacks or threats to the user. It doesn't matter if you can punch a giant robot into ashes if you're incapacitated in the process. Versatility is determined by how many situations your quirk is useful in, like creating bandages to apply pressure to a wound or using a hostage rescue without punching anything. If so, your quirk is more tactful than Bakugo's. Before we begin, we need to explain what each tier means. D tier is for the quirks that actively hinder you in their use. Like example, all for one in the average person would be badly injured whenever they tried to use it. It took Izuku nearly a year of training to use it without dying. All Might said, your arms and legs would fall off if you ever tried. C rank is for the quirks that have mild or manageable inconveniences, like trying to buy a pair of pants and modifying them to accommodate for your tail. But overall, the quirk doesn't hinder you too much and has some uses that outweigh the drawbacks. B rank is for quirks that are useful, that have little to no drawbacks and that are useful in certain ways, like being able to move small objects towards you, like Inku Midoriya, for example. A tier is for the quirks that are very useful but don't have a wide range of uses in the context of a pro hero, with manageable drawbacks if used responsibly. For example, the ability to change someone's mood through touch in exchange for you becoming more and more agitated in response to more uses. And S tier is for the quirks that are held on another level to the rest. Quirks that are very useful with little to no drawbacks in the context of being a pro hero. Let's begin with the alien queen herself, Mina Ashido's acid. Mina creates an acidic gray slime from her skin that is highly acidic that can melt concrete. The slime's thickness can be changed as well as the acidity. In combat, gear destruction doesn't always determine the outcome of a battle as displayed by Sir Nidai. Acid does have good damage potential in close range battles against the average villains, but fighting villains like the Prime Nomu and Muscular, Acid falls short as the slime would need to be made very acidic, weaning down the user as their natural resistance to their slime would be testing potential leading to acid burns to the user, but this is shown only to happen when the user has overused the quirk. Acid Shot is a projectile attack that has the option of a ranged attack to the user's personnel, as well as covering retreats. The user can coat their arms and legs in the acid to enhance their hand-to-hand -hand abilities, but the user must take care as they don't have any control over the slime after it is excurted, once again leading to acid getting a 6 out of 10 for damage potential and an 8 for crowd control. But because the user doesn't have control over the acid when it is used, nor being able to neutralize it, the acid would get in the way of other heroes earning a penalty, leading to a 7 out of 10 for combat capacity. Acid's defensive use is impressive as the user can create a shield of acid that is insanely acidic and thick as displayed by Mina as she could melt the steel projectiles before they could reach her. She has also shown that she could cloak herself in slime causing damage to her opponent if in melee and reducing the amount of damage taken. Acid could be used to set traps for villains by coating the floor with very thick but harmless slime. The user could force them into a cage or a combination attack with another hero. The quirk could also be used to climb buildings by melting handholds for the user as well as damaging cameras and locks or hinges of doors, giving this quirk an 8 out of 10 for versatility. 
the support capacity of this quirk is limited as the user has to hold back and monitor the amount of slime being produced to protect their teammates, resulting in a 6 out of 10 for support. As it is somewhat impressive in the number of applications, the slime can be used to slide over dangerous surfaces like Shoto's ice or other hazards on the battlefield like exposed rebar, rubble, and broken glass, but this would hinder other heroes in the area, but would make sense for setting up traps for a large group of villains. Overall, Acid is a good quirk with a notable amount of drawbacks, but the good far outweigh them, leading to the ranking of a high B tier. If the user could control the slime after it was produced in a cloud or other form, this quirk would easily be placed in A tier. The next quirk is Air Cannon, the ability held by All for One. The user can create powerful air blasts. This quirk hasn't gotten much information on it. The only time it has been used was in the fight between All Might and All for One. Air Cannon seems to be focused on damaging attack rather than utility. All for One is seen flying, but it could just be one of his many quirks rather than Air Cannon specifically. Air Cannon was used to destroy rows of large buildings in a single attack as well as causing nearly fatal damage to several pro heroes in another. Air Cannon does have awe-inspiring damage potential, almost unbeatable crowd controlling ability, and it was used to badly wound a weakened All Might to the point where he could only hold his battle form for a moment after the fight. All this gives it a 10 in those categories, but the other categories are lacking because of its limited screen time. Support and defensive capacity as well as the other stats are given average scores of 5, but not for versatility as it is unable to silence these blasts or use them for anything besides attacking and the massive blast would kill teammates or bystanders. The quirk also lacks any potential support capacity in rescue or combat, giving both a 0 as they actively hinder those efforts. In terms of a hero's purpose, this quirk is too focused on combat and lacks any supportive qualities, leading to it only being mid A tier. Airwalk is a quirk that allows the user to walk through the air giving them high advantages over the opponents, increasing mobility, making retreats more easily. In terms of combat potential, this quirk is lacking as by itself it doesn't have access to offensive attacks or abilities. Yes, the user could use launch projectiles from an elevated area, but that would be considered a support item. The defense capacity stops the average villain from reaching you, so it could be said that this gets a higher rank because of that. But as a hero, you should be helping people rather than just keeping yourself safe. So I would give this quirk a 5 out of 10, as the user can keep away from the average villain that doesn't have access to a ranged attack or slow moving opponents that attempt to jump at them using a quirk that is slower than Tenya Ida's engine quirk. The versatility of this quirk could be a high rank as it could be used to avoid a hazardous environment in the case of an actual disaster, used to spy on an enemy base, deliver a small number of supplies to vital points secretly, this quirk could even be used to transport a small group of hostages from a high-rise building if the user can hold on to the hostages, but that's just speculation and takes the user into account rather than the quirk exclusively. Airwalk can be pretty versatile if used correctly, earning it a 7 out of 10 for versatility, but its combat potential is lacking, only earning it a 2 out of 10 without any support items or support. The support potential of this quirk does add some combat potential, leading it to a 3 out of 10, as by itself it would only allow a few people to be kept out of arm's reach from average villains like gang members and not for an indefinite amount of time. The quirk doesn't seem to harm its user, so it's safe from being a D tier, but by itself, it doesn't have the versatility or combat potential that the other quirks have access to, leaving it in mid C tier. The next quirk has a user that goes against the idea of sacrificing for others. But before we get back into the dive, I'd like to say that in case you guys didn't know, we're only one of the many We The Celestials channels. If you have a sugar tooth for great storytelling, please give our What If channels a visit as well. No matter if it's My Hero Academia What Ifs or Naruto What Ifs, we've got you covered. Did we get your attention? Great! Make sure you click the icon in the top right corner or check the description below for the links to the other channels. Now, with that out of the way, let's get back into the dive. All for One needs no introduction, as all fans remember this quirk's introduction as well as foreshadowing by All Might. The user of the same name was able to kill a previous holder of One for All and later badly injure All Might, but losing that fight. This quirk is insanely powerful since it can steal quirks and hold them until the user passes them on to another person. This quirk could even be a mutation type quirk. It can be taken regardless. It doesn't seem that the number of quirks that stockpiled negatively affects the user, other than 9 of course. In terms of combat, All for One is easily a 10 out of 10 as the user can combine these quirks they have stolen, which becomes terrifying. 
For example, the user could steal homing, which allows the user to lock onto a target within 600 meters and track the target, but the user has no control over the part of the body that the projectiles will hit. Zoom is a mutation quirk that allows the user to see up to 5 kilometers away. If the user of all for one could obtain these two quirks, they could extend their range of their projectiles up to 5 kilometers, allowing them to remove dangerous opponents from a safe distance. This ability to combine quirks easily earns it a 10 for combat capacity, as a quirk could be stolen that fills the role that is needed. Versatility is simply a 10 as well, for the same reason why combat capacity is a 10. Users of all for one can steal a quirk like warping that allows the user to produce a black ooze that covers the target's body, teleporting the target to a specific person. This could be used to transport a massive amount of supplies to refugees or victims of a natural disaster or massive battle. Bystanders can also be teleported to a doctor outside a hospital. There's no visible limit to this quirk, earning our first and likely only perfect score in every category. The only place for all for one to be placed is in the high S tier. Even though the previous quirk has world shattering power that might make those who come after look unimpressive by comparison, the other quirks aren't useless by any stretch of the imagination. The next quirk is a great example of this, Amplivolt. Amplivolt allows the user to store electricity inside their body and release it later, creating electrical blast resistance to electrical based attacks. Some might claim that this is just Denki's electrification, but there are some differences between these quirks. The biggest one is that Amplivolt isn't able to create electricity itself, but store it exclusively. It's the difference between a battery and a generator. This quirk seems to lean towards combat rather than versatility. The damage potential is impressive as the user was able to use a powerful move called Supreme Discharge Thundernet that was able to badly damage a large number of heroes with this massive blast of electricity. The combat potential, crowd, and large threat control are quite impressive as this user would have been able to fight off the group of heroes if it wasn't for Denki absorbing the attack. The damage potential and ability to hold off a variety of threats leads it to have an 8 in combat, only being brought down by its limited defensive potential as the user is only able to protect themselves from melee damage as they could cover themselves with electricity. The versatility is very limited as we don't know how this quirk could have been used since it doesn't have a lot of showings. But we could say that it is similar enough to electrification, we could say it's similar enough to make the assumption. Amplivolt could be used to jumpstart cars that could be used to evacuate wounded after a path has been cleared in case of a natural disaster. Amplivolt seems to be more focused than electrification as Denki needs a support item to fully control his ability while the member of the Liberation Front doesn't need that. This could be said that this is experience rather than the quirk itself. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in a mood for some great storytelling, We The Celestials has got you covered. Our We The Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved with the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.